So this is where we have most of our experiments done. The lackluster state of agri-food life sciences in India is a cause for concern, especially when we consider how innovations in synthetic biology, chemistry and biotechnology can catapult Indian agriculture and food systems to a profitable and sustainable future. Is there an unaddressed gap in our education system? Or is it that we keep losing our best talent to the West? Why is it that we are so far behind our global counterparts? Let's find out from entrepreneurs who are blazing a new path in this space. They prepare seedlings, like you can see there. They sow the seeds there, and uh, this polyhouse is required for the conducive uh, conditions so that the seeds germinate faster. We had spent all our lives in labs, extremely disconnected from the farmer. So we took one year to be on the ground to understand the problems. To so we spoke to anybody. Uh, in the field who was going to, you know, who was willing to share problems with us. So whether it was a seed company, a biotech company, a farmer, a grower, a nursery guy, a seedling industry, we spoke to anybody and everybody just to understand uh, a common set of problems. Once we had common set of problems, we established Bioprime as a private limited company in 2016 and started with the funds, uh, a proof of concept funding from Department of Biotechnology called Pyrac. Once uh, that was there, the obvious next challenge was finding the first customer. And it was extremely difficult because we thought, you know, farmers would roll red carpets for us. And lo and behold, it was not the case. We had to struggle even to get 10 farmers willing to, you know, try the product uh, that we had got. Now we work almost with one, one and a half lakh farmers on ground in almost uh, eight states in the country. So at Bioprime, we are re-looking at the way we actually grow our crops. What we've discovered with our years of experience and research is that in an attempt to increase yields, we have robbed our crops of their defense and adaptability responses. This is why we have to rely heavily on synthetic chemicals, insecticides and pesticides. If we want to transition to a more sustainable and regenerative agriculture, then we need to approach this problem holistically. So there are multiple attempts that we are doing to do this. Uh, one is the discovery on molecules. For this, we have a platform Sniper, which is smart nanomolecules induced physiological response. So here we look for molecules which act like molecular switches and they reprogram the plants metabolically to make them climate resilient. In the second attempt, we are looking at microbes that can form very close association with plants and um, are able to reduce the synthetic fertilizer requirements significantly. So by looking at plant as a community rather than a single entity, we're creating holistic systems that would actually help us transition to a more sustainable and a reliant agriculture. We wanted to build India's largest plant-associated microbe library, which was not done in the country before. And we were looking at targeting about 15,000 microbes three years down the line. 
So many were came in and questioned that is this a capacity thing or a life cycle thing? That is it going to take you exactly the, that much of time, or can you accelerate the process? And so the target was to do 15,000 microbes in a year, which looked absolutely unachievable. But one year down the line, we are 17 and a half thousand microbes and growing, and are India's largest uh, plant-associated microbe library. Coaxing better yields out of our farms is no longer enough to feed the burgeoning billions. We are rapidly moving to a more protein-intensive future with rising concerns around animal welfare and environmental sustainability. Agri-food life sciences can bridge the global shortfall in protein supply and reinvent entire agricultural value chains. For example, replacing unsustainable fish meal with insect protein, thereby creating a circular economy at scale. These are dried silkworm pupae, which is one of our core raw materials that we use. And if you look at it, so these are the bivoltine species. These are multivoltines, a bit darker. There's a growing demand for sustainable alternative ingredients because we have limited supplies of arable land, potable water, and wild flora and fauna. Now, how do you create these sustainable alternative ingredients? Is by creating more and more bioresources. These bioresources can be the new ones that we identify in nature, or we create a value out of the waste that we are generating from the existing ones. The food waste and the agri byproducts from our food and agri systems is creating enormous amounts of waste. We leverage this to feed our insects, and the insects in turn will become new bioresources. They are rich in proteins, fats, and biomolecules, which can be leveraged to develop n number of products, which serves our current needs. So once the ins dried insects reach our facility, the first thing we do is separate the impurities. Once the impurities are separated, we use our process, which is a solvent-free process, to separate the fatty part of the insects and the protein-rich part of it. So we get two products out of it. One is the oil, which is pure fat, and then we get protein-rich powder, which we call insect meal. Both these products are used for the animal feed industry, mainly for pet food and aquaculture. Conventional aquaculture utilizes fish meal or fish protein concentrate derived from wild marine fish. You take in fish from the seas and the oceans, convert it into a powder rich with protein and feed it to a farmed fish. So this fish in fish out mechanism is not at all sustainable. To make a sustainable aquaculture system, we at Loop Firm have created a product called insect protein concentrate. Insects are the natural food for fish and birds. This would help gain the productivity in farmed fishes and also help us save our oceans. People have been talking about insects as feed, but we feel that there is a larger potential to it. We want to establish ourselves as an insect biotechnology company where insect biotechnology piece would basically encompass animal nutrition products, but even plant nutrition, cosmetics ingredients, nutraceutical ingredients, and even biopharma in some near future. The sky is the limit here. Whenever we imagine insects, we imagine pests, but that is not the case. Over 3,000 varieties of insects are being cultivated across the world. And over 2 billion people, 25% of the world population, are consuming insects. So they are safe. Yes, 25% people are consuming them. 
Now, if you look at the nutrition profile of them, 30 to 70 percent proteins, 20 to 40 percent fats, and a lot of different and rich biomolecules which can act like as a good gut probiota, which can help you in your overall bone health, can give you good hairs. Uh, all of that can be a part of our nutrition. Food security is a massive problem for the future. Food technology and agri-tech are going to be major drivers to solve this problem, not just for India, but for the world. So traditionally, we've not seen a lot of innovation in life sciences from Indian context. Because we've not seen a lot of inno innovation and commercialization, there's less VC interest. Because there is no funding available, then there is less innovation. So it's like a vicious cycle that keeps happening. And I think somewhere somebody has to break the circle in terms of early access of capital to make this work. It is clear that India can no longer afford anemic progress in agri-food life sciences. This fledgling space needs to be revitalized with both talent and capital. Now is the time for investors at every stage to step forward and help reshape our food systems.